we have put all the cables that we need to pull into the cabin um, you can see that um, there are two orange um, pins over here uh, this is something you have to uh, change out from uh, one of the plugs that's located over here so let me point to it if you can see this big plug over here uh, you got to detach it so how to detach it what we're gonna do is we are going to uh, just like how you remove the door handles we are going to flip up this um, there's this lever here that you're gonna flip up and once you flip it up you are able to remove it okay let me get a good grip on it once you flip it up you get a good grip and you remove it and um, we're going to be leaving this here because we'll be working on this which I think is being held together by a clip so what we're going to do is we're going to slowly pry the clip out okay I think this is a good time I'll be taking my trim remover tool so with a trim remover tool we're going to go behind this um, plug look for the clip which uh, is somewhere around here okay and we are going to pry it out it's kind of tight because I think this is the first time it's going to be pried out okay almost there Now you must understand that um, when you are doing this, um, as you can see, there's a tab over here that's uh, inside. We are going to remove this um, red color lock around um, this switch. Let's see. Using a test pan, carefully pry it out. Um, be sure not to damage the clip. So pry it out um, slowly in different uh, angles. Okay, you can see some of it is slowly coming out. So take your time. Do not rush. You don't want to be breaking anything. And there you go. After we have removed this um, red color lock on the front, if you flip the switch back to the rear, you will be able to see that there is this uh, black color lock that we also have to remove so we will start by same thing slowly prying it um, don't really use much force okay um, do it slowly at one go one at a time two sides just uh, loosen the two sides and then see if I can push it up Okay, this side is out. Now we'll go to the other side. Okay, let me loosen it a bit more. Let's see. Okay, there you go. Now, after removing the front lock and the rear lock, what uh, we are going to do now is we actually have to remove uh, one of the wires from this uh, plug and actually plug back in this have to plug back in to this uh, plug over here there's a one for one swap so according to the instructions uh, you have to take out the 13 pin uh, number 13 pin number 13 so uh, let me tell you how to look at it from here so there are actually two rows of uh, cables over here and you can see that the top row the top left which is the one i'm pointing to this is number nine followed by 10 11 12 and 13 as you can see cable number 13 which i have singled out let me single it out for you okay cable number 13 which is this uh, orange cable over here um, this is actually the same color as what 
the same orange that you're going to uh, plug it back in from the harness from the auxiliary switch harness so what we're going to do now um, this is the one two three four five fifth from the left so we're going to go ahead and count here so this is a uh, one two three four five and we are going to use a depinning tool that i have over here to actually uh, depin it okay so now as you can see is it out uh, let me try yeah it's out show us which pin you used so um, I can't really tell but it's the slimmest one that you have the sharpest and the slimmest one just uh, push it in release the clip so now that this uh, orange uh, wire is out so let's take it out okay um, we will proceed to remove it from the back okay here we go we have it out now okay and now from um, the auxiliary wiring harness that we actually put through into the cabin just now there is a one orange color exactly like what you have just pulled out you route it back in the same uh, channel so let's line it up again if not it's not going to go in we are going to push this um, pin back into where the original pin actually came out from so let me line up the oops it came out again sorry So let me line up this pin so that it goes in the correct direction and it can lock into place. Um, okay, this is it. Let me double check. Okay, I think it's like that, sorry. Yep, so like I said, orientation is all about orientation. You actually have to go in the correct way, enable to... Uh, um, fit nicely and snugly back into the plug so in we go <sighs> sorry if the video is not very clear because um, I'm trying to push this uh, pin in but um, it's not easy so Okay, let's see if I can pull this plug up further to get some leverage because I, I can't get any leverage from this uh, angle. So okay, push it in, in you go, like that, uh -huh. there we have it and you push it in. And there you see, um, one, two, three, four, five, the fifth pin now is sitting nicely in place over here. So um, the pin is in. So let's uh, make sure a little by pressing it up to make sure that uh, it's tight. Okay. Yes, it is. And now we'll actually go ahead to lock this bunch of wires back into place you hear the clip yeah. and there you have it and now with the pin that you just uh, took off uh, Mopa provides a plug that you have to plug this pin into so remember this bag of hardware tools where we have all these uh, plugs yeah. um, I think it is um, this plug over here so now taking the female side of the plug um, yeah, the female side of the plug, uh, there are two cavities. Uh, I don't think you can see it on the screen, but um, it's actually labeled one and two. But uh, we are going to use cavity number one. So we will be slotting this um, pin into cavity number one. So slot it in slowly. 
and then you will hear a click when it goes in okay you heard a click so now once this is in you have to jam the other cavity using this uh, empty plugs that uh, Mopa provides so what we are going to do is uh, we are going to put it back in here the other cavity so we will actually uh, let me line it up as usual hook it in okay and you hear the click and once you are done um, ensure that everything is tight push in this white tab and there you have it you have set your uh, female plug for this uh, connection and now you will take the other male plug and same thing is labeled uh, cavity 1 and 2 so 1 and 2 yes here it is so same thing um, but to be extra doubly sure um, line up the plug line up the plugs and make sure that okay the sides of the orange color wire coincides with one another so in this case it goes in here so now we'll go ahead and like what we did previously push it in you'll hear a clip or you'll feel a clip clipping into place okay you heard that and now we'll take the other uh, empty nut we'll actually proceed to clip up this um, area okay and you hear the clip and same thing once you're done um, there's this white tab inside okay um, push the lock in using a plier I mean a test pen and you will see that it's seated nicely and now what you got to do is actually to connect the two plugs together and there you have it so um, for this part we are done and now we'll proceed to actually um, install back this uh, plug but before we do that we have to install back uh, the lock over here uh, double check the wiring is fine okay and you install it back on okay and now we are going to go ahead and install it back into place okay um we'll actually tidy all these cables later but for now this is what we have to do we have to plug it back in and push up the lever to lock it and with the push clip over here find the cavity that you previously um, took it out from which is somewhere over here um, but before I proceed what I'm going to do is I'm going to cable tie I'm going to cable tie this um, this plug that we have just installed okay to this um, the clump of wires over here so that um, this thing does not uh, move around like I say I'm very particular with wiring using a cable tie we are going to actually cable tie this um, plug nicely to this cable and make sure it's tight okay and once it's done snip off the end of the cable tie and now we are going to reattach this clip back into where we took it off okay now we've got it in now after we have installed this uh, plug back into its original position um, you can see that now we do have these uh, four auxiliary wires hanging out and these four wires uh, will have to be heat shrinked uh, later to protect the ends from ever contacting any part of the car or even short circuiting each other so <coughs> we'll do the heat shrink later and as you can see to connect uh, appliance or even an accessory to the switch all you have to do is just uh, attach the positive side of the appliance or the accessory to this switch and ground the negative wire to the car chassis and you already have a working switch to turn on and off your accessories now now that this part is done we still have another slimmer longer wiring harness that uh, we have yet to work on 
um, this will actually be routed up into the area behind the glove box okay um, this area as you can see is already had full of cables so what we're going to do is going to route from the bottom up through inside through all these cables and through this second bunch of cables into the center dash behind the center dash and now what we're going to do is we are going to remove the dash the center dash this portion this portion and finally followed by this portion uh, which we are going to change out the auxiliary switches and I mean change out this uh, cubby and install the auxiliary switches at this position now I'm going to teach you guys how to remove the center console and followed by this lower center console um, it's very easy so um, this is actually held in place by clips so what we're going to do is that we're going to pry it out um, so we're going to okay uh, release some clips and you can see um, the clips are out so one word of caution is uh, when you're prying this out do not uh, immediately pull it all the way out because as you can see there are wires connected to these panels and you don't want to be uh, tearing these wires so once this main panel is out okay disconnect the switches number one here that's for this uh, center control buttons and number two here this is for the engine start stop so we'll go ahead to remove the plugs one here and two here and now we'll set this one side now before we can remove uh, this thing there's actually a phillips screwdriver head over here um, using a phillips screwdriver head release this screw um, to make it clearer let me use my torch it's getting dark um, this screw here release it and you'll be able to pry the rest of this panel out and you will be able to see uh, what's behind so we'll go ahead to remove this Phillips screw okay and once we have removed the Phillips screw we'll go ahead and pry this panel out as you can see it's all held together by clips so and the same theory is uh, when you remove this uh, please be careful not to just uh, pull it all the way out because there are plugs behind that's um, <coughs> connecting to this uh, panel here so please be very careful um, what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, remove them uh, one by one but not least we have these uh, power windows so there is a red tab over here to remove this plug push out the red tab okay press it in and remove it now as you can see over here we have removed the entire center panel and what we are going to do with this uh, bunch of cables that we actually put through the firewall just now we are going to route it up the glove box up the glove box and all the way coming out from the middle console out here where the switch is going to be so we'll just do that now okay now what we're going to do is we're going to run this uh, cable up into the back of the glove box so as I say, everything is a tight space, so you have to use your fingers to feel. I cannot possibly uh, show you a video where to go. So as you can see, this cable is now routed up. So let's route the whole length of the cable through so that we can uh, secure it properly. Okay, so as you can see, there are actually two bundles of wire here according to the MOPA instructions you are supposed to pull through this wire through this bunch of wires and the second bunch of wires into towards the center console ok 
okay uh, adjust the wiring make sure that uh, you pull it to the maximum you can because we need the length to actually um, go through the center panel so now Mopa provides a foam tape in the accessory pack and the instructions is along the length of this cable here um, tape it up with the protective foam tape which I'll do it now There you have it. Now we have our protective foam tape installed. We will proceed to route this uh, bunch of cables towards the middle dash. So using your hand, you've got to, you can see my finger here and here. So we are going to route it this way, up and wish me luck. It's a very, very tight um, fit thing. So let me see, where can I? Behind this, yep, there you have it, and we just pull it through, and there you go. So, this um, the wiring harness provided by Mopa gives you just the correct length to reach all the way to this uh, auxiliary switch position, um, which is a good thing. So let us um, secure this uh, cable properly by using the cable tie so as you can see this wire has gone through this uh, bunch of wires so what we'll do is we'll actually cable them, tie them together so now um, we'll go on to the next step which is uh, slightly complicated but uh, be patient, do it slowly and uh, you'll be able to do it now what we are going to do next is finally install our switches on the center panel and we'll start off by removing this cubby um, it's being held together by one, two, three, four bolts so we'll go ahead uh, with a 5.5 mm uh, socket we will actually start removing okay and um, now we have uh, removed all the bolts we'll go ahead and remove the cubby so you can see it's a very simple uh, installation so now what we're going to do is we're going to be fitting the auxiliary switches from behind to the front and wow look looks amazing the bezel matches the rubicon uh, bezel so everything looks uh, OEM from factory and of course it's from Mopa so it's supposed to look um, nicely integrated <clears throat> now we'll go ahead to tighten back the four bolts that we took out to secure this in place Okay, and now uh, we are done securing the switches to the central control panel. Now, previously, to prevent any short circuit, uh, we have bunched up this, I mean, we have uh, actually protected this bunched up wire by using a black tape, uh, black electrical tape. So now we will proceed to remove them. But uh, do remember that while they are actually exposed out, please do not uh, touch the connections um, in case uh, things get shorted out. We don't want to spoil our fuses so 
let's take them out one by one and you can see that actually these uh, wires they are actually already uh, color coded um, because what we're going to do next is that we'll be actually um, pinning them onto oops, an empty plug over here and then after you pin them from the empty plug you are going to plug it into the auxiliary switch bank uh, from the back so let's uh, take out all these uh, clips I mean pins okay and it's quite a lot of few of them just two more make sure that uh, none of them are touching each other okay um, and lastly now putting the wires onto this um, switch I mean onto this plug here it's uh, relatively important um, to not mess up the color of the wiring and also the position of the wire that is supposed to go to so from this view um, you can actually see under lighting let me use the torch since it's dark there's a number one written on the top row here on the left and a five on the right top right and then followed by a six on the bottom left and a ten on the bottom right now according to Mopas instructions okay the red wire will go into the first slot number one which is uh, this uh, this top left uh, slot so what we are going to do is we will be careful not to cross the wires okay find the red wire which is this one over here uh, we are going to cross it I mean we're going to plug it in like how we previously plugged our so in we go we'll go ahead and just push it in and then listen out and fill out for that click okay this wire is thinner so it may not be as okay now it's clicked into place confirm it by giving a light tap and it will not come out so if you can actually see this cable over here this is actually a brown cable with an orange line this is the one that goes into slot number three so skipping number two we'll proceed to uh, meanwhile be very careful not to touch the connectors of the other lines uh, let me find the right side up we will slot it into number three over here push it in and here look out for the click you got to reposition it and push it in okay you heard the click and now this position is ready and next we'll actually move on to position number four this slot number four which is uh, just next to slot number three um, is actually the brown and violet uh, cable it's very close so be very patient and here it is you have a brown and violet there's a violet strip a purple strip across here I don't think you can capture it in the camera so um, do look out for it and we are going to go ahead and pin it in here we go push it in and wait for that click to sound out still no click because of the angle so I will probably have to push in furthermore probably need a tool over here we'll try to use a cable tie to nudge the cable in 
furthermore so that uh, now please make sure you heard a click yep it's in so please make sure that all the pins are seated correctly and securely if not when you plug it in some of these pins are going to come out and something's going to go wrong okay so now for the top row as you can see we have actually a uh, pin in number one three and four okay the next one will be the next uh, second lower row that is your black and white cable so looking for the black and white strap cable which um, this could be challenging but like i say um, do it slowly do not um... now let me have a look at this this is the brown and white sorry yeah it's the brown and white not the black and white <laughs> um, i've got the color wrong under this uh, lighting so this will go into the sixth position which is actually the first slot on the second row on the second bottom row on the left so what i'm going to do is you have to try to rotate this plug around uh, so as to fit in nicely with the positions so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to plug it in to position six and we're going to go all the way in and look out for the click yep mm -hmm. there it is and of course now the next uh, wire is the brown and grey wire which is this wire over here there's a grey strip over here that will actually go into slot number 7 which is next to number 6 which you just put it in so it's very clear cut just uh, go ahead and uh, poke it in let me align the tabs and here you go this way in you go push it in straight look out for that click okay now it's seated in and the orange will go to number 9 and the black will go to number 10 we are only left with two wires now so let's just go ahead uh, number 10 is the last one on the right and 9 will be the one next to it so we'll go on and uh, do it Now that all the pins are actually clipped in, um, there is a white color lock here that all you have to do is just push it in and now all the pins are set and we can proceed to install back the center console, uh, plug in all the plugs that we have taken out. This is the wire for the auxiliary switches that you have just installed and as you can see behind the auxiliary switch um, there is a plug here for you to connect so we'll go ahead and plug it in we still have quite a few that the clips are in line before you actually uh, put it back so you gotta wiggle it a bit in you go there we go in okay 
So now we have the media center actually fixed back. I mean, this lower portion of the center desk fixed back. We will now go ahead to actually uh, fix back that um, center console Phillips screw that uh, we had previously taken it out. So. me a while I'll proceed to go and uh, take my Phillips screwdriver oh it's over here so we'll proceed to install it back okay and now what we're gonna do next is we are gonna plug back uh, these two wires uh, by installing back our top center panel console so this one goes to the uh, start um, the car start ignition button and this one will actually go down to the middle console here now with all the clips uh, being uh, connected back let's proceed to put this back realign the tabs and give it a, a light knock okay and we are almost done um, actually I think we are done okay um, however the final and most important steps other than putting back everything is that um, you need to get this um, car flash by the dealer you need to get an ECU flash to actually show the menu options for the auxiliary switches on your U-Connect um, but luckily we have a Taser JL Mini that can just do the trick and you don't have to go to the dealer to do it and I'll show you after I have installed everything back on this car. Now we will be starting the car to show you how the menu settings look like before the activation of the switches. So I'm going to start my car and the front screen turns on. As you can see without the activation of the switches on the U-Connect there is actually no LED lights from the switches um, I'm pressing them now and you can see that there are actually no LED lights that come on and or off so we'll proceed to go to the settings menu and you can see this is all our settings and as we browse down you can see that uh, we do not have any options um, regarding the auxiliary switches and we are already at the end of the menu and there is no so what we are going to do now is we will activate the auxiliary switches using the taser gel mini and i will show you how to so now we turn off our car and like what i showed you previously in the video regarding the uh, setting up of the taser gel mini what we have to do now is without uh, stepping on the brake pedal turn your ignition to run and you can see that the screen starts up okay and we will proceed to go to our audio menu on the EVIC screen which is here and pressing on the left arrow and cancel button you can see that we have gone into the programming of the Taser JL Mini with the first uh, option light show and as we browse through you can see that um, you have to go to the menu settings under others and here you go now after you have reached the others uh, menu go into the sub menu by pressing the left arrow and the cruise control and you can see for the first sub menu option here you have it, it's a AUX AUX NO and now we will change it to YES by pressing on the left arrow and the cruise control button and shorten that again what arrows do you press on? Um, the left arrow and the cruise control button mm -hmm. so um, we can try again so now you see this um, auxiliary uh, option has been turned from no to yes and that's about it that's what you have to do then um, to exit the menu um, before you do that you actually have to do a reset so we 
cycle around the menu and you can see under this uh full reboot okay um click on the left arrow and the cruise control button and your car now will go into a full reboot it will start counting down from 150 so um let us just uh, wait for it to come down As now you can see, we have a countdown to zero and what we are going to do now is that we will um, cycle the engine switch back to off okay, and open your door so that everything shuts off so once you have opened your door, uh, you can see that the screen and everything has shut off and close the door, start your car the normal way, pressing on the brake and you can start your car and now we'll go ahead to look at the menu options here and see what has changed so we'll go back to settings and this you don't see any aux uh, settings but let's browse down and now you can see that there is a new menu option called aux switches so you can click into it and this is the settings page for the aux 1 to 4 so just to run you through um, if you go in further in into the individual switch settings, you are able to set the type that you want, whether it's a latch on or momentary. Uh, momentary um, meaning when you turn it on, um, after a while it will actually um, go off. And of course latching it uh, means it's a permanent on or permanent off. And moving down to the power system, uh, you can choose either it's an ignition or battery battery meaning it's going to be on full time even if the engine of the car is off um, the car is uh, switched off you are still able to power your appliance or your accessory uh, when the car is off but um, of course this you will risk um, actually draining your car battery if you're not careful and of uh, we'll bring it back to ignition so ignition meaning only when the car engine is on, um, when it switch, when the car is switched on, uh, you are able to um, switch on and off your appliance or accessory. And of course, this last option, recalling the last state, it means that before you switch off your car, for example, uh, maybe I've turned on my light switch, and when I turn off my car, this is the lights are going to go off. But when I actually come back to my car and switch it on again. It will recall the last state of that switch which is on and my lights will come on automatically so this is the option to go to uh, to recall the last stage so let us exit and we can see that all the other options um, all the other buttons have the same options so um, let's move down to our switches physically and you can see that now you are able to activate the switch and the switches are working um, the LED light comes on when the switch is activated uh, it turns off when the switch is off so um, you can see that the Taser JL Mini can actually uh, replace uh, the job to be done at the dealer but of course there's one drawback to this meaning when you actually unmarry your Taser JL Mini um, this option is going to go off until the next time that you actually marry the JL Taser Mini back and you have to reactivate it again However, if you go to the dealer and get the ECU flashed by them, this menu option is going to be permanent. But of course, when you go back to the dealer to flash it, they're going to charge you a fee. So this, um, I'll leave it up to you guys to see whether you want to do it at the dealer or if you already have a Taser JL Mini, you can go ahead to activate it at the comfort of your own car. And now we are done with this uh, installation of this uh, Mopar auxiliary switch bank. And I hope that this uh, video is informative. Sorry if it is a little bit dry and boring at times, but uh, this is a very technical installation and you cannot have any mistakes on the depinning and the pinning of the pins and also of course the installation of the uh, P PC uh, PCM, the PDC, sorry, uh, in the engine bay. So uh, forgive me for this uh, extremely long video. And now we shall end this uh, two-part series over here and we will look forward to installing accessories onto the switches soon. Thank you, bye!